Today I'm going to show you two ways that you can change black to any color in Adobe Premiere Pro. What's good, everybody? Welcome back to another Quick Tip Tuesdays with me, Camilo Castaneda for DKD21 Media. If you're like me, you didn't know you can change black to different colors in the color wheel because in technical terms, black is the absence of color. It's not as easy as changing blue to green or yellow to orange. So I did this effect in a speaker commercial that I did for Anchor Speakers. It was a spec commercial. You can check it out here if you haven't seen it. But essentially, they have a red and blue version of this speaker and I don't own the red or blue version, but I really wanted to include it in the commercial. Thankfully, these methods help me change the color of the speaker. And this might come useful for any products that you're doing where you need to do the same. So with that being said, let's get on with the tutorial. So now we're in Premiere Pro and I have a shot of the speaker. The first method we're going to use is the change to color effect that you can find in your video effects, color correction, change to color. If we just drag and drop that to our footage and we go to the effect controls, you can see that there are two options for color. There is your from and your to. So essentially what color you change in, in this case is gonna be gray blackish and to what. And in this case, let's just do red for the sake of it. If you click okay, you see nothing really happens and that's because we have more settings to play with. We have the change option which has some sub options of hue, hue and lightness, hue and saturation and all three. I usually go for hue and saturation <laughs> and as you can see it does look pretty bad. The reason for this is because our hue is by default set to 10%. So if we increase the hue up we cover most of the image. But the speaker has turned red, it basically kind of just washes red all over it. If you want to control how much darker the red is, how much lighter the red is, you do that by choosing. The closer you are to black, the darker the color is. The closer you are to white, the lighter the color is. Between those colors, you have the saturation. So the closer you are to the main color, which is red, the more saturated it is. But the further away you go from the main color, the less saturated it is. So you're kind of playing around with something here. And a rule of thumb is to always check back with your original image and kind of gauge the lighting conditions, the color conditions. As you can see, the colors right now are very desaturated. So if I was to enable the effect again, I'd want to choose a red that's quite desaturated. Something, something along the lines of this. You may be wondering, okay, sure, you made the speaker red, but you also made everything else red. Don't worry, we'll get to how we can actually separate the element, but I wanna show you the other method to change black to any color first. So if we duplicate this layer, get rid of change to color, and we actually go to Lumetri color. So I actually prefer this method because it gives me a better range of the color that I selected. For example, if we go to HSL secondary, you have a color picker, you have a regular one, you have one with the plus sign and one with the minus sign. Essentially, a regular one is as if we're using change to color because when we click it, we only select the one color. To see what we've clicked, we click this checkbox next to color slash gray, and we see the color that we checked. For example, if I click it here, we only are going to affect this color range here. If I move it somewhere else at like the table, we're only gonna affect the table. But with the plus sign, you can actually click and select many more areas. So you actually click and hold and kind of drag around what I want to select. As a result, I think this method is much better because we're actually going to select every single possible range of this speaker. So as you can see, if I scroll through, you can still see some of the noise that is kind of changing the pixels. The Sony a7 III does have 8-bit color, so it doesn't have a huge color depth, hence you get issues like these. So what we have in the refine section right here, you can actually denoise the selection, and then you can add a little bit of blur, and that will pretty much get rid of most of the noise. Play around with these settings until you get something that looks right. So once you have a mask selected, we can actually deselect it here, and we can go to the correction tab. Uh, if we click these three circles, we get to the shadows, midtones, and highlights. And basically the difference between the change to color method and the HSL method is that you can play with the different levels of color in your footage. So you can actually make the shadows go red and then you can actually make the highlights go red as well. So you have more control basically. You can also make those highlights darker and you can change how bright the midtones are of your selection. And to me, I prefer that because I'm trying to match how the uh, original footage looked, then this to me is going to be very, very helpful. And if you wanted to desaturate it, you can also change the saturation from here. And maybe you can do some sharpening if you wanted to. But yeah, you have a lot of options in the HSL tab. Right, so I'm done with this selection. Okay, so we have 
both our methods colored, but now you're wondering, oh my God, Camilla, you've actually colored the speaker now, but you've also colored the entire scene. That's where we get to masking. If we start with the change the color method uh, in the effect controls, on the change the color, you have your mask tools. And essentially you want to just mask around your object. So this is a very rough mask. You can see now that we've only selected the black speaker. But if you press play, as you can see that the mask isn't going to stay in the color. So you have to track the mask. So to track the mask, we hit the toggle animation stopwatch next to mask path. We don't actually have to mask it frame by frame. We can actually jump a few frames, tweak the mask, and then Premiere Pro will basically fill in the gaps. So if I actually run through it with these three points, the mask holds really well. Obviously, if you have a more complicated shape, it might not be as easy as this one because this was quite simple. But at this point, you've actually completed the effect. Let's do the same masking for the other method simply by clicking the mask pen right under Lumetri Color. And if I do this mask quickly, And if I run it through, you can see that the same thing applies. If you wanna be very clever about it, you can actually cut halfway through the clip and then you can change the color to a different color, uh, like I did in the commercial video. So I'm changing this one to blue. And if we actually play it through, you can see it goes from black to red to blue. And that's pretty much how I did it in the commercial video. If you're figuring out which method to use, either the change to color or the Lumetri color method, Think about what objects you have and whether there are many different shades of black that you want to change. Lumetri color obviously gives you more of a range, whereas change to color only selects one color. But mess about with it, have a good time with it. If you have any questions about this effect, leave them in the comments below because I read every single comment. And if you like this video, make sure you leave it a like so other people can see it. And if you want to learn more about filmmaking, editing, and I'm actually getting more into visual effects, definitely hit that big red subscribe button below and click the notification bell so you get notified when I make a new video. Otherwise, YouTube won't even tell you. But with all that being said and done, I will see you in the next video.